Hallo Leute, ich bin James und ihr seid Deutsch für euch. What's up? I um, just realized maybe I should not have put a piece of gum in my mouth right before I started recording. Let me remedy that. So, happy times. We're revisiting the articles today. Aren't you glad? I know that's everyone's favorite topic, including myself. So more specifically, we're tackling a somewhat tricky question. Which grammatical gender do we assign to nouns that are imported from other languages? First, let's get the obvious part out of the way. When importing words from a language that itself uses grammatical gender, German also just imports the gender that the noun has in its language of origin. I don't think that's an official term, but do you like how I made an immigrant joke out of grammar though? Well, that's a fair assumption. It's also wrong. Yeah, you forgot you were talking about German for a second there, didn't you? Didn't you? Yeah, that's fine. To be fair, that's usually how it's done. For example, the French word aller Female in French stays female in German, just like the word Balkan stays male in German, even though the C changes to a K and the pronunciation differs from Balkan to Balkon to Balkon to Balkon. The French word garage, however, while male in French, is female in German. Die Garage. This one has a specific reason, namely that the ending age, A-G-E, it just sounds female to us, so every word that ends in age is female in German, regardless of what it was in French. So at least you can count on that. You know, the ending rule kind of overpowers the importing rule here. Oh, by the way, in general, the, the ending game, as you know from episode 5, so, you know, assigning gender based on ending, generally works for imported words too. So if you have an imported word with an ending that has a general gender assigned to it, it will be that gender. On the other hand, though, there's cases like these. While Italian doesn't have the neutral gender option and risotto should technically be male in German too, many people will assign the das article to it. And less ambiguously, the same goes for das ambiente from l'ambiente and das banquet from il banchetto, both male but neutral in German. In fact, Italian male nouns seem to be at an especially high risk to be neutered in German. Wonder if that's any indication for reality. So while original gender is a good guide in most cases, it doesn't seem to be reliable. But then again, when you look at languages like English that don't have grammatical gender, that really doesn't matter anyway. Because after all, we're gonna need some sort of other system for those. For them, it's most likely that the gender of a noun in German that it could be translated to will be used. For example, there's the German word der Rechner, the calculator, that used to be used for computers. And accordingly, computer became male. Same goes for stuff like der Post on a forum, for example, not to be confused with die Post, which is our postal service. Der Post, closely related to der Beitrag, hence that uh, article assimilation, or die Fantasy, die Fantasie, and das Top. Das Oberteil. And generally, I think it can be said that this rule is pretty reliable, especially for English words that are not already in common use in German. So let's say, for example, that on a whim I wanted to use the word ride in German, which usually we don't, so for something like a carnival ride. I would then most likely say der ride, because even though this noun cannot be used in this way in German, we have the word der ritt. But you're probably already suspecting it. Unfortunately, this rule only gets us so far too. Die App, for example, is female, even though the closest German equivalent would be das Programm. And just as a side note there, die Applikation is a word that exists in German and is indeed female and it might be related to this. However, die Applikation isn't, or at least wasn't used for a program, an app, but only for application of like, you know, something in your face. At least as far as I know. Feel free to correct me on that. Don't know why I said that, I'm on the internet. People will correct me anyway. Anyway, the, the biggest issue with this rule we haven't even talked about, what about words that don't have a German equivalent? Which arguably is the most important reason you would import a word anyway. And now we are exactly at that point where most Germans will tell you, well, I don't know, I just go with what feels right. And honestly, that's kind of the reply that I will default to myself because that is what you do. But of course, 
As overanalyzers that we are, we know that this right feeling must come from somewhere. And that somewhere is most likely a mix between the aforementioned association with some German word that feels related and already has a gender assigned to it, plus subconscious pattern recognition, namely that of sound structure and endings. This doesn't always work reliably for Germans either, by the way. That is, for example, why there is so much debate about the genders of Nutella and Ikea. Because there's actually some freaks who say der Nutella and die Ikea. I still can't get my head around that. It's clearly das Nutella and der Ikea. So, like with the French age ending from earlier, words that end in a single e, so e, or a single a, are most likely to be assigned the female grammatical gender and article. And words that end in er or er are most likely to be assigned the male grammatical gender because that's the tendency that already exists in German. Not rule, tendency. The same is true for multiple other endings, some of which are actually codified in the Duden's Grammar Dictionary. One other example would be ion, which results in a female grammatical gender. Union, Revolution, etc. Um, beyond that, however, we're stuck where we left off. There are some pointers that will make a guess more likely to be correct, and there are even some traces of rules. But, uh... In the end, German articles stay as elusive as ever. At least now you know that you are still perfectly justified to be frustrated about that. And that's it for today. As always, these are my lovely patrons who have decided to support DFE financially. Thank you all so much for that. If you want to join the ranks of this list and also get a few rewards like grammar scripts and charts, you can head on over to Patreon. Always link in the description, check that out. Decide whether you want to support DFE or not. If you don't, that's fine too. If you do, you'll be here. Your random word of the week is die Krake or der Kraken or der Octopus. Now die Krake and der Octopus really are synonyms. It's just that Krake I think is a bit more of a Germanic word while Octopus is the Latin word. But der Kraken is usually the Kraken, you know, the big thing in the deep sea. That's der Kraken. Die Krake, however, is just a synonym for der Octopus. Whee! Bis nächste Woche. Tschüss!